All right, 1.1, functions. What we're looking at here is a function is a special type of relation. You learned this in grade 11. The special type of relation is that for every x, there can only be one y value. And when there's one, for every x, only one y value means that it is a function. Now, we can use this definition and apply it in different ways. Since functions can be represented graphically, numerically, or algebraically, examples can be as follows. Um, we use a vertical line test to define uh, how graphically we can determine if it's a, uh, a function or not. So let's look at an example of a function like this. This is called a mapping uh, diagram. This mapping diagram here represents a function because when you look at it, for every x along here, it only maps to one y, and therefore it is a function. When it's not a function is when you have, for example, like this, where you have two x's, no, sorry, one x going to two y's. You cannot have this, and therefore that makes this not a function. Let's look at the graph. Looking at this example, we could draw a vertical line. For example, we can take this, a vertical line such as this and drag this vertical line. We can drag it right across. Okay, we're going to take that vertical line and, just a minute, bear with me. We can take this vertical line and take this vertical line, sorry, one second, and drag it right across our graph. And as we drag it across, this vertical line test tests to see how many times it touches the graph. As you can see, it only grass crosses the graph, the blue parabola, once throughout. Therefore, this vertical line test tells us because it passes the vertical line test, that this must be a function. Now, what happens if we look at a different type of graph? So let's see another one. Let's look at this one, for example. What if we take a vertical line for here? Well, if we take any vertical line, let's say there, we can see that that vertical line touches the black graph twice. And because it touches it twice, it therefore is, it fails the vertical line test and therefore is not a function. Alright, next. Let's say we have an equation, y equals x squared. So this x will have uh, one y for every x. This here represents a function. An equation that looks like that, x equals y squared, is not a function because for every x we could have two y values. Now we're going to look at other examples of functions where they're not, uh, sorry, of relations and of functions later on in this course. Let's move on. Example one. State the domain and range of each and identify the types of, uh, identify which ones are functions. So this one represents something you've seen in grade 11. And this next one is an example of uh, a mapping diagram. The first one will be a function, logically, and the second one will not be a function. But we're going to look at that in a minute. Let's state the domain and range. First one, we state the domain and we find out that x belongs to real. This is the case, okay, of a sinusoidal curve, okay? These arrows here don't mean they go on forever and ever. It just means they oscillate up and down forever and ever in both directions. So this arrow here, over here, would actually curve around. It would curve around, come back up, and so on. So we have to be able to state the domain and set n in interval notation. So you have x belongs to real. What is that in interval notation? 
Well, it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is going from, and looking at the scale, remember there is a specific scale for this, we'll see that the scale of this particular function is y belongs to real such that it goes from negative 7.5 to positive 10, including those values. In interval notation, you would have negative 7.5 to 10. So what you can have in the front to identify which one is domain and range is you could write a little x here. So x belongs to for the domain and y belongs to for the range. So again you do this because to identify which ones are domain and range. Yes it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. And remember the vertical line test. So if I take a line and let's say I draw one over here for you over here and I take this line and I drag this l vertical line anywhere across the graph. So let's just snatch it for a second and you can see that I'm going to drag this line anywhere on the graph. Okay and look anywhere across the graph you can see that this line only touches the graph once. All right, next, looking at the mapping diagram over here. Remember the definition. For every x, there can only be one y. There's only one y for this x, one y for this x. Oh, here we go, folks. Two y's for this x. Everybody else is fine, with the exception of the zero. But let's do the domain. The domain here is negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 4. The range... Now notice the way I wrote the domain. Two different ways and both ways are acceptable because it has been noted in different notations in different textbooks. Now we would not definitely do this using interval notation because in interval notation it would take us forever to write out all of those. So the range would be y belongs to and these numbers that are in the range. Now don't forget when you state the domain and range, especially for points, you only say write the number once. Even though you see that 5 is used like 3 times for d 3 different x values, you only write that once in the range when you state the range. And finally, remember earlier when I asked you if it was a function or not? Well, it isn't because of those values. So it's strictly just a relation and not a special relation called a function. All right, another example. This time I give you a list of coordinates. These, this list of coordinates, you're to determine whether the domain and range. And the last one, you give you an equation. And it should be quite the familiar equation. All right, so what I should ask you to do is stop the video now and try these before the answers pop up. Stop the video now. Okay, welcome back. So, the first part, the domain, is going to be x belongs to the numbers in the domain. Remember, another th important feature is that it has to be in order from lowest to highest. So the lowest x value is negative 1. Then it goes to 1, 2, and 3. Even though 2 is repeated twice, we do not write that number twice. As, uh, and then we continue on with the range. Y belongs to, what values? Well, 4 and 5, folks. Now, why did I circle those? Well, let's go back for a minute and see why they're circled. If you see here, is this a function? Well, in, case, in, this, in our case, this set of coordinates is not a function. The reason why is that these coordinates, 2, 5, and 2, 4, they have the same x value but different y's. And that fails the definition. So therefore, this is not a function because for x equals 2, there are two y values is all you have to state. And the last one, y equals negative 2, x minus 4 squared plus 5. This, folks, is a parabola. This parabola has the coordinates 4, 5. The vertex of this parabola has a coordinates 4, 5. If you remember, this is a parabola that actually opens down. 
So a vertex that opens down. Now you cannot use this graph to use the vertical line test to test for a function. So we have to state the domain. Domain of every parabola is x belongs to real. And the range is going to be y belongs to real such that y is less than or equal to 5. And note the interval notation. Now for parabolas, this is a function because for every x there is only one y value. And that's all you have to do if it is a function, is to restate the definition. Alright, and now, function notation f at x is used to represent the values of the dependent of the dependent variable in a function. So for example, number one, part four, so the equation that we had, we can take that y that you see here, we can take that y, make them disappear, and replace it with f at x. That's all that is. That's what function notation is. Now, example number two. I want you to be able to determine g at two minus f at negative one, given the following. g is a table and f is a graph. We need to find g at 2. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, there's a 2 right there. No, that's not correct. g at 2 means when x is 2, what's the g value? Well, that means we have to go back to our table over here and find g at 2. Here it is. So g at 2, the y value is 20. So when we write g at 2 minus f at negative 1, we find that g at 2 is 20. Now, what's f at negative 1? So now we've got to look on the graph. Find negative 1 on the x. There it is. Find where the graph hits negative 1. Well, that is at 3. So at negative 1, the y value is 3. That means that it will be, this expression right here, is going to be 20 minus negative 3. 20 minus negative 3 has a value of 23. Alright, that's the end of 1.1 folks. Have a good night. Take care.